Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Shots in the walk -in. My name is Anna. And my name is Renee. And we have a lovely, lovely guest here with us today. Hi, Amber. Thanks for being here. Hi, I'm excited to talk to you guys. Yeah, we're we're excited to have you here. This should be fun. We actually, you're a good friend of someone that we really care about. And so that makes this really fun. We've been talking to a lot of people that we don't know, but kind of feel like we just know you a little bit already. So that's cool. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So Amber, um, your this is a, a podcast. We do um, service industry. So most of our guests so far have been um, bartenders, managers, owners, chefs. Um, I don't even think we've had a server on yet. <laughs> it's a problem. But um, we typically try to go uh, in that area where we at least have, but we wanted to kind of expand into some um, stuff that people aren't going to think of right off the bat. And I, for one, very much feel that strip clubs are part of the service industry. Uh, are not totally. Yeah. So I was really excited that you agreed to come chat with us because you have experience in the strip club arena. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, I wholeheartedly agree with you. I think um, strip clubs are part of the service industry. Um, I think sex work is work. Yeah. I think the parallels between um, being a bartender or a waitress uh, or I should say server, um, is very similar to, um, being a stripper. Um, although there's some major differences, yeah. <laughs> um, obviously I don't think servers or bartenders are sex workers. Um, right. but I do think that in the case of strippers, they are both sex workers and work in the service industry. Yeah. Um, that's, yeah. That's a good point. Um, at least I would identify that way. So, yeah. yeah. So I think this is really cool that you guys um, are including us because oftentimes we get excluded and um, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, we don't want to exclude anybody. So we no, are we're, pumped. Yeah. We're all friends here. We're all, we're all, you know, trying to figure out how to have a good time and pay our bills and make yeah. nice people. Right. So. Yeah. And nice. stay safe and stay safe yes yeah it's speaking of being safe we like to do at the top of the show a safety meeting which is bartender code for taking a shot <laughs> you know it's funny i've never been a bartender but i've heard that before Have oh you? good yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's our little code like oh are you feeling safe i'm not really feeling safe let's go let's go talk about it <laughs> let's go take a shot in the walk-in yeah, yeah absolutely so, well, let's take a little shot in our walk-in here which is actually a zoom <laughs> meeting but that's okay 20, 2021 or whatever yeah right. yeah what are you shooting today amber um, well, I didn't have a lot of options, so I've got a Captain Morgan's spice rum here. Hey, perfect, <laughs> nice, wonderful. <laughs> I am doing my my reg Omeka Altos tequila. Delicious. Yum. Yeah, I actually Medor Blanco. It's totally just gonna be great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cheers, ladies. Cheers. Cheers. Yum yum yum. That'll warm you up. Yeah, totally. <laughs> this is always like jump starts my like body into just like a little bit sweaty but like kind of having good I don't know you know yeah well you just got off work Anna so this that's is like true. it's perfect it's wonderful that's true I um, needed it I happy hour. It today exactly <laughs> seriously yeah totally um so Amber give us a little background on how you got into the industry um did you did you ever work I guess you just said you have never been a bartender before but yeah. So how did you get into the service industry as an umbrella? Oh, um, well, <laughs> my first job, I was a housekeeper at a hotel. Oh, okay. And that sucked. Um, <laughs> and then I did a lot of retail. Um, Which again, I believe is service industry adjacent. Yeah. It, it's definitely customer service. Um, and uh, worked some fast food. Uh, was a sandwich artist at Subway. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Love um, it. Yeah, I also had like a social work type job at one point, um, which was awful. Oh. <laughs> it was like minimum wage for Volunteers of America. Uh, don't recommend. 
anyway, yeah. um, basically trying to survive under capitalism, yeah. uh, working multiple part-time jobs and being able to pay rent, but not eat or eat, but not pay rent. Uh, yeah. That top you know. ramen life. Yes. Um, <laughs> visited a lot of food banks. Mm. Um, yeah. And it wasn't really my idea. I had a friend who was quite a few years older than me, who was between jobs and was like, Oh, I'm going to go down and apply at the strip club, but I'm nervous. You want to come down and apply with me? And we were applying for waitressing jobs, Oh, um, which in Washington state is literally just delivering soda to people's tables yeah and I was like well I can pour soda sure I'll come down (laughs) and we both got hired um and I waitressed for a year before I started dancing Mm. um and the motivation was money you know (laughs) seeing how much uh money the dancers make and being like okay I could do that and yeah, so right. I switched to dancing like literally seeing the money that they make too yes <laughs> literally um <laughs> because one of the things that I did as a waitress was trade out ones for 20s and trade out 20s for hundreds so dancers would come up to me and be like hey here's 600 dollars in 20s can you trade it out for me and I'd be like damn like if she can make 600 dollars, maybe I should try this yeah no kidding. Kidding. Jeez. yeah <laughs> yeah, that would be kind of tough to look away from for sure. Right. Yeah. But I definitely waitressed for a year first before I started dancing um, sure. and and then made that transition. So yeah, yeah. does that does that tend to happen pretty often with uh, people that start as, you know, a waitress or serving those sodas and kind of get a little taste or, you know, I mean, that's, I feel like happens in restaurants a lot too, where you start, you're a host, you see how much the servers are making, you want to do that. And you see how much the bartenders are making, you know, you just want to step it up. Um, I don't know what the percentages are of that. Um, sometimes it happens. Sometimes it doesn't. There's um, some people that just don't want to make that transition. And, um, you know, the waitresses get paid uh, minimum wage plus tips, right? Um, dancers don't get paid at all. And oh. in fact, we have to pay house fees to the club to work every night. Oh. So there is some <clears throat> uh, trepidation <laughs> with making the switch um, because, and this is different in different states. It's not the same everywhere. But okay. as a general rule, in most places, dancers pay to work and it's either called a house fee or a stage fee and Mm. so um losing that security of that minimum wage paycheck plus tips to going to now you have to pay every night that you come into work can be like a major step that some Mm. people just don't want to cross or maybe they're just not comfortable with the idea behind dancing or being a sex worker and that's fine too so yeah yeah. sometimes they do switch and sometimes they don't is it um, typically when you say a house fee, is it a percentage or a flat fee? It depends on where you work, but sure. in Washington state, um, it's a flat fee mm. um, and many places it's a, it's a flat fee. Okay. Um, yeah. Also in Washington state, uh, they add on other fees. So I say it's a flat fee, but then they also add on other fees. Like, well, if you do a VIP room, you pay extra. And if you sell this particular dance, you pay extra. And yeah, so <laughs> it can be pretty expensive to work. Wow. I <laughs> never knew that. Yeah. I've never heard oh, that I before. Can't. Okay. Let's stop for a second. Yeah. Which is why you should always tip your strippers. <laughs> yeah, no, no kidding. kidding. Yeah. yeah. So do those fees vary from establishment to establishment or is it, it is statewide? Um, so statewide in Washington state, if, if you're working at a strip club, you pay fees. Um, yes, they do vary from establishment to establishment, but in Washington state, um, There's one company that has a monopoly on strip clubs. I think they own 12 out of 15 of the clubs in the state. Wow. Um, Really? We only have 15 strip clubs? 
um in the state yeah wow i didn't wow I yeah so one. um and that company is deja vu and sure. so they basically have a monopoly and they can charge whatever they want because there aren't a whole lot of other options for folks uh to go work other places mm. Mm. is that a thing are there a lot of people that have worked for that company that are not big fans of them because of that <laughs> well it causes a lot of problems um yeah <laughs> because if you have a monopoly and let's say uh you get fired from one of their clubs they can ban you from working at any of the other clubs um right. and effectively put you out of work um so obviously that creates a power dynamic where you can't really um, question their decisions or speak up or advocate for yourself in any way as a worker because wow. you could end up not being able to get work in this state, basically. Um, that's yeah, up. so monopolies are yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's really crappy. <laughs> yeah. Wow, um, that's pretty wild. By comparison, uh, you know, in Portland, <laughs> one state over three hour drive away there's you know I think they have over 50 something strip clubs and they're oh, all wow. owned by different people and some of them are just little tiny bars with a pole in the corner you know right so um that's the difference between you know um and and part of that has to do with zoning laws mm -hmm. um which is like a whole other thing <laughs> adult zoning um in Seattle is super strict and basically it makes it impossible to open up a new adult business. Oh, um, because it needs to be like in like a certain distance away from certain like schools or distance away from schools, daycares, parks, churches. And the list is so extensive that it basically makes it impossible to open up adult businesses anywhere. Um, because there's just not a locate. I mean, except for like, you know, out in the industrial Soto area, maybe, but there's just not a location that fits all of that oh, criteria. Yeah. Jeez, that is wow. churches and parks. Like, come on. Yeah, also, give me a break. <laughs> anywhere, really. Like, who gives a shit? Seriously. That's, that's really frustrating. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned the difference. Okay, so obviously Washington isn't... Um, maybe a real big bag of candy when it comes to working as a stripper here. Um, but Portland, I'm curious about, because we, in Washington state, we can't um, serve alcohol in the strip clubs, but mm -hmm. in, in Port, all, if you live in Seattle, you already know that you can go down to Portland, go to a strip club, get a shot and a steak, and it's like the best day ever. So people yes. like very, <laughs> pretty commonly there'll be a group that just goes down to portland just to go to a strip club eat some food and drink um so it's mm -hmm. a whole different experience absolutely yes. yeah can you like talk i don't know talk a little bit about that <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so not having alcohol in the clubs definitely changes the vibe um to where if you're going in there, you're definitely going in there for the entertainment and not for a drink or to hang out with friends or to have a meal. We don't serve meals here. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that changes the vibe a lot. Um, different dancers have different experiences with that. Personally, I was not a big fan of working in Portland. <laughs> I really? went out there and um, there was a lot of people that were the, just there to hang out and drink and not really so much there for the dancers, but everyone's opinion and experience with this is different. And I am absolutely for um, legalizing alcohol in strip clubs in Washington state. I think it's ridiculous that if you're going into an adult business to have adult entertainment, you cannot also have a beer. Um, yeah, yeah I'm gonna have zero to agree sense. with you. <laughs> um, and there's some real, uh, teetotalers in this state <laughs> that do not like um, sex workers. They don't like strippers. They don't like adult businesses and they don't want anyone to have any fun or have any drinks. And they would really like to just shut us down is what it is. Um, and 
Yeah. So there's some yeah, state but- legislators that are just anti strip club, anti adult businesses, and they're like trying to make it as difficult as possible for folks to earn money in those industries. It yeah, feels mind the more your own that we business, talk people. About, yeah. It feels <laughs> like, like the more that we talk about this makes me um remember like prohibition comes to mind with yes. Yes. the way so that Washington is treating us. So I'm not um originally from Washington and I don't know how long either of you have lived here, but when I moved here, um Washington had state run uh liquor stores. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And I voted um, for that law that was going to allow liquor to be sold in grocery stores and at Costco and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, But we have very strict liquor laws um, in this state, Um, which is one of the reasons why you can't have like nude performance of any kind in a bar, like a gay bar or burlesque show or anything like that. It's um, because of liquor laws. It's not actually because of the nudity. So if a burlesque dancer is performing and their pasty slips off, the, the bar could lose their liquor license, right? Mm. Um, I was about to ask so, if that's why burlesque dancers have nipple tassels all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Got and it. even at, even at like, um, you know, clubs where they do drag performances and things like that, like they have very strict laws about, um, <clears throat> not just regulating how we display our bodies, um, but also regulating, um, what kind of entertainment is acceptable in an establishment that serves alcohol, um, which yeah. is Yikes. Mm, not so great, <laughs> you know, um, maybe let adults have some fun and some agency and autonomy over their bodies and decide for themselves um yeah it's yeah yeah so there there have been clubs that have opened up um in the past there was one called jiggles Mm. and they actually got shut down because they were too close to a um school i believe Mm. oh it was in the u district and it was I was gonna a, say I feel like I've seen that sign like I can see it for some reason you know yeah, there was one club it, it was called Jiggles and they were serving alcohol and the dancers had to always wear a g-string and always wear pasties they couldn't get nude at all got it. um but it got shut down very quickly because so many laws because obviously <laughs> Washington is not down <laughs> it's not down nope. no you can have all the marijuana you like yeah (laughs) no nipples and beer in the same building yeah (laughs) well and it's like so funny that nipples are like that's where the line is drawn you know if you can just cover those cover those little suckers up then it's like (laughs) then then it's okay you know Mm -hmm. (laughs) well the the Mm -hmm. the liquor board here in washington we know is super strict just because of working in bars and restaurants and clubs and there is always a liquor board presence you know the the you know the worker the liquor board guy or girl yeah. will stop in and it's, make they sure that they're you know that they're wearing, there they're always wearing khakis and like a fleece vest I was gonna say the vest yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh clipboard and they're like always yeah, coming like, in looking mad yeah you can always spot them and they they do they come in to all these places all the time and just want to check that everyone there has their liquor card and make sure that they can pick 10 people out of the crowd and make sure that they have their correct and not expired ids and just all that good stuff it's it's definitely a thing in this state and i know that it's different obviously in many other states and they've been starting to kind of make some little exceptions here and there but man I just it's kind of crazy that that's such a strict thing yeah I mean I completely agree that if you're going into you know enjoy some entertainment and you are of age that you should be able to enjoy a cocktail as well come on people I feel like boobs and beer are a great combo yes completely seriously completely come on (laughs) yeah it's just yeah that's unfortunate (laughs) that's what we're working with um did you you mentioned that you weren't Mm -hmm. the biggest fan of working 
in Portland in a, in a setting where people are allowed to drink and eat and, you know, are kind of more there to socialize. Was it because they're not, you know, not as many people are, you know, they're specifically kind of, you're not earning as much money, I guess is, is what I'm trying to say, because people are getting distracted doing their own thing, just kind of not paying attention. Is it, does it feel kind of like rude almost? Uh, yeah, that was my experience, but you know, every, um, city and every state has a different kind of environment for those kind of businesses. Um, some people really love working in Portland and hate working in Seattle. So it just depends. Um, but I, I think that, um, yeah, adult businesses in Washington state should be allowed to have liquor if they choose to. That doesn't mean every single one will, sure. um, because some places might choose to be a juice bar still. Um, certainly we get a lot of military, uh, customers coming in and not everyone in the military is 21 so mm -hmm. that you know um it's good to have both um some adult venues that are 18 and up and some that are 21 and up um and in portland they do have that and i believe in vegas they do have that as well um so you know not everyone that goes into a club wants to get drunk. Um, sure. And not everyone is 21. So, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. That's a good point. Honestly, it kind of, for some reason, I was just thinking that the age was like 21. You're eight, you're an adult when you're 18, you can do all these things when you're 18. I don't know. It yeah. just seems. Yeah. I wasn't thinking about that either. That's a good point. There's a pretty big gap there between um, those years. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. It's yeah. A chunk of people. That's for very sure. sure. Uh, 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 so let's see. Obviously, COVID is a very big thing happening right now in our universe. I know that a lot of you know, obviously all of these businesses are not able to kind of, you know, continue Be open at all right now. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious to know if you have any input on people, you know, deciding to like move to different places where the laws are less strict. Obviously our laws here in Washington have been, well, they're super strict all the time, but our COVID kind of rollbacks have been really strict and a lot of people are out of work. I know a lot of people in the restaurant industry that we know have kind of decided to choose different industries to join or kind of move back home and that kind of thing. Have you noticed, or do you have any input on if that's a thing in your community? Um, yeah, so the club I worked at has been closed since March 15th of 2020. Yeah. Uh, it's now April of 2021. Yeah. I do not know if or when that club will reopen. Um, a couple of clubs in Seattle have reopened. Um, oh, I didn't know that. With the, yeah, um, there's a couple it, not very many um but with the fourth wave of covid happening in seattle right now and the impending rollback to phase two of jay Inslee's reopening plan uh it's quite possible they will get shut down again yeah um so i've been on unemployment yeah <laughs> all year <laughs> um which i I am very privileged to have been able to get unemployment. A lot of uh, my dancer friends could not get on unemployment um, for various reasons. Um, it's pretty high barrier. And originally when the COVID shutdown happened and our club closed, there wasn't even an option 
for us to get on unemployment because there wasn't the pandemic unemployment assistance. Dancers are independent contractors. Right. Totally. We don't get a paycheck. We don't have pay stubs. We're not on, we're not considered employees. So getting on unemployment at first was not an option for us. And luckily because of the pandemic unemployment assistance, the PUA, yeah. some of us were able to get on unemployment, but not everyone. You had to have your taxes in order already from the year before to prove your income. And if you didn't file taxes or claim your income as an independent contractor, you couldn't apply or get PUA. Um, so there was a lot of reasons why people were not um, able to get it, but um, yeah, they probably, I feel if they didn't have their taxes, they wouldn't have gotten the stimulus or the um, stimulus check either. That's a whole other thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a lot of my friends didn't get stimulus checks or unemployment. Mm. Yeah, oh, wow. that's terrible. Man. Yeah, yeah. That's, so and that's, that's crazy. That's a problem that's common to all sex workers and strippers are some of the most privileged sex workers because uh you know what we do is legal and um even even at the high privilege level a lot of sex workers are not able to qualify for any kind of government assistance so right mm. yeah being an independent contractor that's a whole nother can of worms because man i'm sure that even just getting organized enough or staying organized enough throughout the year to even like tackle those taxes. That sounds kind of stressful to me. I mean, I know a handful of people that kind of like work for themselves doing this or that or whatever. And um, I've always just heard it's a big pain in the ass. I've, I've never had to do that before, so I can't relate, but that's a good point. Yeah, it's it also fun. takes a lot of honesty yeah. too, right? <laughs> yeah. It's not fun. Um, yeah, I bet. <laughs> as, as a stripper, I pay quarterly taxes um, because there's no withholding, right? So I just have to yeah. pay every quarter. Um, and then I file a schedule C at the end of the year and I end up owing every year. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, cause there's no withholding, right? Yeah, if you don't get yeah. a paycheck, then they're not withholding anything for taxes. So then you just owe and owe and owe and owe. Sure. Oh yeah. I've definitely like screwed up and not claimed tips correctly for a, a year or two and then had to just figure it out at the end and then pay back money and then get back money and ugh, it's not yeah quarterly <laughs> is a whole different game though that's not yeah, really that's a lot that's uh yeah, well being your own I, biz. I started paying quarterly because um it was either pay large sum yeah at the end of the year or pay quarterly so that it's not as painful. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. yeah. It's, it's, it's much smarter that way for sure. Yeah. Well, kind of like a payment plan, but not yeah. really. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that sucks. That's like hard when you just see it go away. Goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye money yeah. to yeah, the no government. Kidding. Yeah. That's tough. So yeah, yeah, and then and then who knows? if the government will ever take care of us in the end right right and we've yeah. seen that now with covid <laughs> no kidding absolutely <laughs> great point no yeah what the hell <laughs> the government's been kind of a bully jeez yep. give us all your money and then sayonara <laughs> and then yeah. also we're gonna make it really hard for you to make money <laughs> yes all of that yeah. well that's disappointing <laughs> that's that's yeah that is disappointing jeez um, okay, so you are kind of in this limbo space right now of um, will I go back to work? When, I, when will I go back to work? So what have you been kind of like spending your quarantine time doing? What are you uh, filling your days well, with? <clears throat> I am not good at Netflix and chill. <laughs> um, so I have always been the kind of person that really likes to keep busy and if I don't have something to do every single day I I I cannot stand being bored yeah um and I I 
need to be active or I get super depressed and I, yeah. So <laughs> um, before the COVID shutdown even started, I was already volunteering on like three different things. Um, and one of those things was Greenlight Project, which is a peer-led mutual aid uh, group for sex workers. Awesome. And I told uh, the founder of Greenlight Project, Sherela Sells, that if the club closed soon, which we thought it probably is going to, it looks like it's probably gonna happen. Um, if there's a shutdown, I'll just start volunteering four days a week um, because my partner was in school mm. and he had to be on Zoom four days a week. Um, and having me in the background making a lot of noise and cooking and cleaning and doing stuff yeah. was probably going to annoy him, but yeah. also just to get me out of the house so that I had something to do because sitting around and being at home is not good for my mental health or physical health. Yeah. So I, um, I knew that that was coming and I talked about it and I was like, I think, you know, the clubs are not going to be able to stay open and sure enough, they shut down and. I just pivoted to volunteering four days a week on that. And I also started baking a lot. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, because baking is one of my coping mechanisms. I love it. Something I do to relieve stress. Um, and I started baking for Greenlight Project. Oh, cool. And oh. for all of my sex worker and stripper friends. So I would just bake large batches of cookies and brownies and muffins and edibles even oh hell um, yeah yes and <laughs> we actually um green light project actually bought a freezer a deep freezer just mostly to contain all my baked goods <laughs> <laughs> um, and actually i'm not the only baker there's several other it's it's a weird crossover between strippers and sex workers and and baking gays. okay um, there's a lot of baking gays in our community so so there's other people contributing to the baked goods freezer that's great i was gonna say that's you are great. everyone's favorite <laughs> say a favorite friend but yeah. well you know i don't even um I don't even really partake in marijuana myself. Um, but so one of the risk factors for COVID is smoking, right? right? Absolutely. So if you can consume an edible instead of smoking yeah. every night, um, that's actually harm reduction. <laughs> and yeah, that's absolutely. Do, right? <laughs> so if I can provide people with edibles to where they're maybe taking less bong hits. Not that there's anything wrong with bong hits. Yeah. Sure. I approve, but yeah. <laughs> um, it might help their lungs a little bit. And then if they do get COVID, maybe um, their recovery time won't be so bad. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's I really, like that. I love it. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> so yeah, um, I, yeah, I do that. And then I'm part of some other um, groups as well, volunteer that's work. Yeah, that's amazing. It's nice that you're know. keeping yourself busy doing that. Yeah, awesome. keeping busy and and feeling like you have a purpose or you're doing some good or putting some good out into the world is always a positive thing. But especially this last year when shit has just been crazy and out of our control and stressful and shitty, that sounds really amazing. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Um, I don't know how not to. Yeah. To yeah. be honest, like, like I said, I'm not really good at sitting around and watching movies or playing video games. Right. I have I a have very to deal short with this. attention. This is getting out of control. Yeah. You go. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> you got a dog attack. Um, come on. But yeah, I, if, if I didn't have that, like, it's not that I'm such a great person. If I didn't have that, um, community, uh, mutual aid work, I would not have survived. Right. Yeah. Well, that's, that's super cool. I mean, it's helping you out and it's helping other people out. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about what the Greenlight Project does or is, or just kind of a little bit more about that? Well, <laughs> <laughs> is that a, <laughs> is that a um, box? The, of... <laughs> first, the first rule of Fight Club is you can't talk about Fight Club. Okay. Hey, that's fine. <laughs> with us. Um, I can tell you, I can tell you some 
general things. Perfect. Yeah. Um, I can't get into specifics. Um, we do outreach to sex workers um, on Aurora a couple times a week and give out harm reduction supplies. Awesome. Uh, we also have a food bank and a clothing bank for sex workers. Brad, that uh, sounds really, really cool. Yeah. There's a lot of other stuff that we do. Um, it's bespoke. So that means someone asks us for help and we tell them whether or not we can help them. Sure. Um, every day is a new adventure. Yeah. I never know what's going to happen from day to day. Sometimes we have one thing planned and something else happens and we're doing some crisis management or something. But basically, um, the idea behind it is sex workers helping other sex workers. And um, yeah. I love it. That's great. <laughs> I mean, there's no denying that, you know, here in our country and I'm sure in plenty of other countries too, but I happen to have only lived here. Um, you know, we don't, there aren't any protections for sex workers. I mean, depending on kind of what you're doing, you know, like you were kind of telling us before that, that working in a strip club, you were kind of more privileged and just because you kind of have maybe the, a few of those types of protections, but I think it's really amazing just looking out for other humans. There's, we need to be doing more of that <laughs> for everyone, you know, everyone counts here. Yeah, totally. And, and honestly, like everyone can be doing that. I mean, you know, you could start a mutual aid group for restaurant workers or bartenders or, um, yeah, whatever other communities you're in, you know, um, the idea behind it is really simple. It's just taking care of your community and, um, you know, sharing what you have. Right. So very cool. Is there any way that people can donate to the Greenlight Project or get involved in any way? Um, yeah. So we do have like a cash app, a GoFundMe, Amazon wish list. Um, mm, Amazon oh, wish that's list easy. Smart. Yeah. Yeah. We also have um, a PO box. So if people want to send us stuff, um, for example, there's a sex worker who makes homemade soaps called Honey Goat Soaps. And they sent us a box full of soap to distribute to sex workers. Um, so yeah, um, the, all those things are available. Um, and I can send you guys like the links for all that. If you're yeah, interested. do that. And we'll, we'll post it in our episode notes. Yeah, yeah. that'd be great. Yeah. 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 Such a good thing. I love it. Yeah. So there is, I mean, there is like a, an unfortunate stigma around sex work is there anything that you wish that you could say to someone that doesn't really understand or kind of sticks their nose up oh gosh so many things <laughs> i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> um we're all trying to survive under capitalism uh sex work is work sex work is real work yes um Sex workers are workers, just like anyone else. Strippers are workers. Um, I don't know, you know, whorephobia and the patriarchy and stigma, it kills. Yeah. And um, I look forward to the day when people won't be criminalized for just trying to survive mm -hmm. absolutely um, but we're not there yet no unfortunately yeah yeah, yeah. do you have a um sorry this is a left field because it's just my reaction um <laughs> I didn't I didn't like 
prerequisite this, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> do you have any thoughts on like the the Nordic model? So like there's countries like Sweden and Canada and a lot of other countries that have decriminalized um, sex work for the sex workers, but have criminalized for the John's side, mm -hmm. like purchasing sex. And a lot of people feel like that's a positive move because now it's taking the sex workers out of the equation for getting in trouble or arrested or having this th these problems. But I know that it's kind of an onion. <laughs> Do you have any thoughts about that? Uh -oh. Yeah. Um, the Nordic model. Ah, crap. We're cutting out. <laughs> I really want this answer. Yeah. Okay, hold on just a second. Okay, yeah, hold on. Okay, you cut out a bunch. Can oh. you just go like this? Move around. Let's see when we get you back. Are you? Well, <laughs> can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. Okay. You're kind there of you coming go. back. You're coming back. Okay. Nordic yeah. model. Sorry. Yeah. Zoom thing. Okay. Okay. Wait. Uh, yes. The Nordic model. The Nordic model. Yes. Is terrible. Nailing it. <laughs> okay. It's extremely dangerous for sex workers um, because criminalizing our clients is just as bad as criminalizing us. Um, the Nordic model in other countries, um, for example, Sweden, I, I believe they have the Nordic model over there and um, it makes it so that your landlord can be prosecuted for running a brothel. So then, uh, sex workers have a hard time finding housing um, because if their landlord knows that they're doing sex work or even if the landlord doesn't know they can uh you know be prosecuted um we don't want our clients to be afraid of getting arrested if they come see us right absolutely <laughs> um that is very bad for business and for safety. Um, and one of the reasons it's bad for, for sex worker safety is because let's say I'm a sex worker and I'm trying to screen my clients um, and they don't wanna screen uh, because they are afraid that I might be an undercover cop and I yeah. might arrest them, right? Um, there's many, many different reasons why I'm, very adamantly against the Nordic model. Um, what sex workers want and what sex workers have always advocated for is decriminalizing sex work, yeah. period, across the board. Um, let consenting adults decide what they do with their bodies and how they work and how they protect themselves and their safety. Um, even in the strip club, things that we do are criminalized and it's so ridiculous so we should decriminalize the strip club we should decriminalize all sex work um for example um a customer could touch my butt and it's illegal for him to touch my butt but then I would get in trouble for it if a cop saw that happening in the strip club right so it's illegal for him to touch me but he wouldn't get arrested I could get a ticket for breaking the code of conduct, whether or not seriously I consented to his touch, right? So <laughs> any kind of criminalization of sex work harms the sex workers, even if it's intended to protect the sex workers. Okay. Um, which is why we we say um, decriminalize sex work and why we say nothing about us without us. Um, which means, you know, stop writing legislation <laughs> about sex work without bringing us to the table um, to help write that legislation. Um, because oftentimes 
there's misguided attempts to or save sex workers that ends up harming us and getting us killed. Um, it's very unfortunate. So, yeah, I could talk about this all day, but <laughs> that, yeah, I'm sure you could. And you know, as we all know, all the uh, older white American men know better, you know, than all of us. So, geez, right. <laughs> it's yeah. like, and all the guys, all the people writing all these, all these rules, you know, they just think that they know a lot better, and they're doing what's best for for your know? body. Yeah, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have you guys heard of FOSTA SESTA? I don't think so. <laughs> no. Um, so there's there's a bunch of stuff about it. You can Google it, like repeal FOSTA SESTA. Basically, um, FOSTA and SESTA were two uh, pieces of legislation that um, were passed as like, this is national, by the way. Okay. Um, they were passed as, um, and I can't, can't remember what they stand for. It's like, uh, How do you spell uh, it? I know I just took that. I like tried to do my best. F O S T A is one and SESTA S E S T A. They were passed, <laughs> uh, SESTA like siesta. Um, they were passed as like, uh, Oh, anti-trafficking, right? Okay. Um, anti-internet trafficking, like. Oh, but, like but taking down Backpage. Yes, that's that's what. Okay, so, but actually, um, what they are is internet censorship laws. Yes. Um, right. Yep. <laughs> and um, what it does is it means that any website that has criminal activity on it um, can be um, held accountable. Um, so for example, if, if someone posts an ad for sex work on, on Facebook, then Facebook could be held accountable. Mm. Or if someone talks about doing sex work on your group chat in some website, then that group chat website server host whatever could be held accountable so it shut down wow. back page and basically all advertising um online for sex work it, it caused huge problems and um before <laughs> that legislation got passed sex workers were loudly proclaiming and advocating for themselves and saying um, this legislation will get people killed um, it's not going to stop trafficking. It's going to push trafficking more underground. It's going to actually make it harder for people to find the people that are doing trafficking. Um, because before, when they were posting it on Backpage, you could just see, oh, there's the ad right there, right? Yeah. Now, there is no Backpage. So where do you go to find someone that's being trafficked? Wow. Who knows, right? Yeah. yeah. And even... Um, and I, by the way, I, I am not an expert on this. I'm giving like the, uh, drunk stripper breakdown. Of, <laughs> <laughs> of what this I is. mean, but, but I'm learning like, a lot here. So this <laughs> legislation was very bad. It caused a lot of problems. Um, it, sex worker deaths skyrocketed the year it was passed. Um, and people that normally, uh, could have, you know, gotten a room somewhere and worked safely out of their room and just posted an ad online, we're no longer able to do that. And so then what happens is maybe they're pushed to doing more dangerous types of work. Um, sure. Right. And it, it will, it also doesn't give you an ability to screen your johns, right? Right. So, um, like I said, I'm not an expert in this stuff, but I, I will say that <laughs> um, if anyone had listened to the sex workers, anyone at all, um, they would have known a long list of reasons why this legislation uh, was harmful and was going to cause- It was gonna backfire big time. Yeah, no problems. kidding. And instead they just passed it unanimously. I mean, every single- um, 
every single senator voted yes on this legislation and um, it's literally caused people to die. Mm -hmm. um, so <laughs> if you're gonna write some legislation um, about strippers or about sex workers or about uh, porn performers or anybody um, about OnlyFans, you know, online sex work, whatever it, you should really talk to the people who do the work because we are the experts in what is best for us and our safety. And um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I <laughs> feel like that all makes perfect sense. And yeah, good I don't, advice. yeah, I don't, Ugh, it's very frustrating. I don't know how many people are writing legislation in our audience, but if there's one, <laughs> <laughs> hey you, <laughs> hey you, hey, we got a bonus. Gregory. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anyway, well, um, we really appreciate you coming on and talking to us because we, um, like we said before, we want we want to include everybody, and absolutely, um, sex work is part of the service industry. So that's the um, truth. It yeah. is, and it's, you know, um, it gets just as boring as waiting tables. <laughs> I bet. I tell you. <laughs> yeah, you can kind of go on autopilot at a certain point and just kind of <laughs> just yeah. you know, through. <laughs> you know, you walk around and do you want some more coffee? Do you want some more coffee? I, I, I literally walk around and like, do you want a lap dance? Do you want a lap dance? <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> yeah it's all your lines like i i think that we all have those lines that we just we can say them in our sleep. We, yeah. yeah yeah i was about to say when you are giving a lap dance are you just like thinking about what you're gonna have for dinner that night and like, <laughs> what like you need to watch it on tv or something like that literally yeah list. why not did, yeah. did i feed the cat yeah um, <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing yeah yeah I like it that's that's pretty great uh, I mean it makes sense when you do something for so long it's not like oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah you're just, just going through your list mm -hmm. <laughs> totally yeah. becomes routine for sure yeah. yeah sometimes I'm driving and I'm like oh shit where did the last 10 minutes go yeah how did it <laughs> just here? like lost in thought you know what I mean uh that's <laughs> that's pretty funny yeah time warp mental time warp absolutely <laughs> that's the thing thanks yeah. amber well we really appreciate you taking the time again it's been really cool just kind of hearing about your experiences and getting your opinions on lots of these really important things and we you know hope that things can start improving and all of the lovely strip clubs here in washington can reopen and people can start making money and people can start spending money because that's also important very important <laughs> yeah we need that maybe we should try to like get some more um strip clubs that are not deja vu to like open up that'd be cool right there you go that would be great um i think that the zoning laws is the big thing okay, for so, that to happen okay right, bigger well, picture yes smart <laughs> We gotta, we gotta I mean, do something yes. about those laws. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. All right. Sorry, well. I I know I just like took you guys on a wild ride of tangents. No, it was perfect. <laughs> no, perfect. This is exactly what we wanted. We yeah. just yeah awesome. wanted to wanted to kind of get schooled a little bit and hear you know what your thoughts were and and yeah. it's really important to give everyone a voice and. That's that was yeah. the only thing that we were hoping for. <laughs> awesome. Can well, I great name this? Yeah, absolutely. Can I name this episode drunken stripper advice or yeah or whatever? What did you say? <laughs> yeah, sure. Are oh, you no. okay with that? <laughs> that's fine. I was right, as soon good. as you said it, I was like, oh man, that's a perfect title for the episode. <laughs> well, because I I'm like, I know that there's like a more eloquent way for me to say this, but I'm just gonna yeah. say it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. It was, it was perfect. It was totally perfect. Uh, that's right, just about cool. on our level. So I love it. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Um, we really appreciate you, Amber. Um, yeah. And I hope this was okay for you. Totally. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> cool. All right. right. Well then uh, to all of our listeners, thank you so much for giving us um, a listen this week and whatever. Uh, we'll have another episode out on Tuesday. Subscribe, rate, review. Uh, check out our Instagram. We've got some really exciting guests coming up. Um, so make sure to stay tuned and we will all see you 
next week. That's true. All right, everyone. Thank you. Bye, Amber. Okay. Bye, bye. Amber. Bye.